Welcome to section 10.11a. So gentle people, what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to go back and talk about equilibrium constant k and the reaction quotient q. Now we discussed this when we started talking about this in chapter 6. And what I did is I told you everything goes to equilibrium and the relationship between q and k and which way the reaction goes. Now, what I want to do in this section, I want to explain the reasoning behind all the stuff that I told you in chapter six. I kind of said, I told you this is the way it is. And now that we've covered thermodynamics, I want to give you guys the thermodynamic interpretation of Q and K. So let's take a look at this graph. On my x-axis, on the left-hand side, are my reactants. On the right hand side is my products. So I'm going to follow a reaction through the whole course of that reaction. Now on the y axis, I'm going to have G. So what I can do is I can take two points, point A and point B. And so the difference between these two points, well, that's going to be delta G. Now what you'll notice is delta G is going to be just the slope of the line between points A and B. Now what you guys will see for A and B, A is higher than B. So I'm gonna take a number that's lower and subtract a number that's higher. And what you guys will see is that there is a negative delta G going from A to B. Now if this is the case, if there's a negative delta G, then it's spontaneous for me to go from A to B. Now what you guys will see is this is going to be true all the way down the curve. What you guys will see is we have a slope that's negative, and that means I have a negative delta G, and if I have a negative delta G, I'm going to be spontaneous. Now this is going to be true all the way to this point right here. Right here, what you guys will see is the slope becomes zero. So that means my delta G is zero, and if my delta G is zero, I'm at equilibrium. But let's put two more points on my graph. Let's say I have point C and D right here. If I were to go from C to D, you guys can measure the slope. C to D means I'm gonna have a positive slope or a positive delta G. Now, if I have a positive delta G, then I am non-spontaneous. So my reaction won't proceed going from C to D. But you'll notice the reverse. If I go from D to C, well, I will have a negative slope. So that means going from D to C is spontaneous. Now, what you guys will see is that I'm always going towards this zero place right here or this zero slope. And what that means is I'm always going towards equilibrium. And this is the reason why I said you guys go to equilibrium. And that is because I will spontaneously go to equilibrium. And that's because I have free energy to only arrive at equilibrium and not get out of equilibrium. Another way that you can envision this graph is pretend that this graph represents a ramp. And you guys are going to put a ball onto this ramp. Where, where is the ball going to end up? Well, the ball is going to end up in this valley right here. That's the natural or spontaneous place where it will end up. Once it is here in this lowest point, it cannot get out without outside intervention. So let's go ahead and review some equilibrium questions out. Tell me if this reaction is at equilibrium given these conditions. If it's not at equilibrium, Tell me if I'm going to make more products or reactants. All right, gentle people, what we want to do is evaluate if we are at equilibrium. And if you guys recall, that means I have to invoke Q. So that's going to be my products, so the pressure of NH3, divided by my reactants, the pressure of N2, times the pressure of H2. Now I want to raise everything to their stoichiometric coefficients, so two, and this is going to be raised to the third. I'm going to go ahead and put in my pressures. My ammonia is going to be one atm. 
my nitrogen 0.05 and my hydrogen 0.1. And I'm going to go ahead and cube that. Now what you guys should get out is 20,000, or in other words, this is going to be 2 times 10 to the 4th. So the first thing we note is we're not at equilibrium, and because Q is less than K, I have to make more products. So just to remind you guys, if Q is greater than K, I'm going to shift to the left until Q becomes K. If I'm like the last quiz question where Q is less than K, I'm going to shift to the right till Q equals K. And if Q equals K, I'm at equilibrium. We've been through this idea. What I want you to understand is the reasoning behind this is because of Gibbs free energy. What Q and K are measuring is which way am I going to be spontaneous. If Q is greater than K, then I'm spontaneously going to go to the left. If Q is less than K, I'm spontaneously going to the right. And if Q equals K, then I'm at equilibrium. This all has to do with the delta G from going from Q to K. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other kind of relationships. So what I told you guys before is if I want delta G, this equals delta G naught, plus R T L N Q. So let's say that I'm at equilibrium. Now if I'm at equilibrium, then I know that delta G is zero. If I'm also at equilibrium, I know Q is going to equal K. So what I can do is I can write this expression and know that this expression is true at equilibrium. I can go ahead and rearrange it and show you how delta G naught is related to K, our equilibrium constant. Now, if delta G is less than zero, so a spontaneous process, then K is going to be greater than one. If K is greater than one, we say things are product favored. If delta G is a positive number, then my K is going to be less than one and then I'm gonna be reactant favored. So what you can do is you can look at delta G and tell me which side of the reaction is favored, the products or my reactants. This will tell you the extent of how far the reaction is going to go. So remember, large Ks means that it's going to go forward in an appreciable amount. Small Ks means I'm not gonna break up my reactants very much. Now what I can do is I can look at delta G and make those same judgment calls. So go ahead and take a look at this and practice this out. Okay, gentle people, what you could do is you can go ahead and take a look at this delta G and you can go to the chart we just talked about. A positive delta G means I'm gonna be reactant favored. Or we can go ahead and take a look at this conceptually. A positive delta G means the reaction as written is non-spontaneous. If it's non-spontaneous, I'm not going to make products and I'm going to stay on the reacted side. And so this is another way that you can arrive at the answer that this is a reactant favored reaction. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.